RMC test that can be used aboard actual vessels. Um, the idea behind the seat test was to improve the efficiency and the safety of that, that specific component. Um, so a couple of things our project wanted to try to accomplish. Um, a, uh, improve the cruise efficiency while docked. Um, for anybody that has sailed, um, time spent in port is really valuable. Usually there's a lot of things we need to get done. Um, so being able to figure out a way to make cleaning the seat chest take less time would have been very valuable. Um, second thing was to implement a more robust and automated self-cleaning seat chest. Um, so basically something that could, like, like it say, something that could clean itself. And then lastly, uh, maybe even try to eliminate the task of even needing to clean out the seat chest, um, have it again automated. that we're going to be talking about was to be your ship owners as well as your operators to so be the captains and the individual uh, seamen on board that are actually performing the maintenance. So as Fernando said, we're just trying to make an updated design that, to reduce the maintenance cycle and make it easier for the people involved. Overall, this, that right there, that picture right there is a picture of the rudder sea chest and they, depending on where they're at, what water they're in, they have to take that out and clean it once an hour which is crazy. Our goal is to eliminate that to where you don't have to do that near as much. A few of the spe specifications we're working with is a flow rate of three meters per second, which we got from Chief Corn off the rudder. He specified that as a good flow rate to use for this project. We're using a one inch PVC pipe to, which is a scaled down version of what's on the rudder. And then we're using these quick disconnect fittings you can see right here. So we can interchange our three different bucket designs quickly without having to rebuild the entire PVC's design every time. Um, so a couple of uh, standards and project constraints we had when designing our prototype. So obviously um, with any sea chest, you're gonna have some sort of regulations um, that have stated by the Coast Guard. So the 46 CFR, um, also, your classification society is going to list some sort of rules um, regarding the construction of the sea chest. So, below is listed the ABS and Lloyd's register. Um, we also have various engineering societies that have different standards for how it should be welded together, um, like what type of steel should be used. And then the last two aren't super important, but um, they're definitely worth mentioning the US EPA. Um, and then the SDCW and IMO. Um, yeah, so here's our project schedule. I was the assigned project manager, I guess. Um, so if you look to the left, I kind of just broke it down, made it a little bit more simpler. But um, all of the major uh, tasks we completed in our project is listed on the left with the uh, three bolded items, the midterm reports and the semester reports being our like, big deadlines we had to meet. Um, during our project, we kind of encountered two big setbacks. Um, obviously we had the winter snow week, which kind of ruined um, our build phase. We had, um, I actually flew down to Galveston for that week um, to help with the build, but um, because of the snow week, it pushed back a lot of our orders for the parts that we had ordered. So we had to basically build what we could during that period um, based off of what we had already like in stock. Um, also, uh, we basically had to move around our project schedule. We lost one of our team members. So um, that definitely, um, that, that definitely made us or forced us to relook re at how we uh, assign resources and like different deadlines. Um, if you look to the right, you can see the stuff that we currently are finishing up. Um, the very last box, uh, the final report and presentation complete. You can see that's due on today, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So throughout the process, we, uh, we split up all of the uh, parts of the project between the four of us. Uh, and the first semester, it was all the design process. 
And uh, each one of us really had a, a big role in the design process. Uh, each one of us had literature reviews, we had uh, concepts uh, generated, and then we all got together to finally evaluate the concepts. Uh, after that, this semester, we broke it down into uh, our data collection, our sea chest designs, and then we built a testing bench uh, to create a scaled down model of the general rudders uh, sea chest. And we broke it down into those three sections. Uh, as you can see here, Anthony was in charge of the CAD design, the steaming system, and then the data collection systems. I was in charge of the filter basket designs, uh, the anti-fouling system, and then the sensor selection. Uh, Wyatt here was in charge of the sea chest uh, compartment and plumbing, and then the test bench construction. And finally, uh, Pranav was in charge of the piping systems and connections, uh, the, and the motor and mobility of the filter. So, as Wyatt mentioned earlier, we had three different designs of our sea chests. Uh, we had a base model, which was uh, based upon the General Rudder's sea chest, which is a very simple design. It's just a filter basket inside of the sea chest that uh, just runs water through it. Uh, then we had our first design, which is a rotational, the basket inside rotates to create <coughs> turbulence and uh, prevent or help prevent the uh, growth of sea life inside of the sea chest basket. We had uh, pressure washing fittings on the side of our sea chest too, so that as it rotated, we had periodically times where the pressure washing would uh, clean the basket and force all that stuff out of the openings in the basket. Uh, and then we had a steam cleaning cycle, which we actually did not get to. We ran out of time uh, before our testing phase uh, started and we did not get to run our project with a periodic steam cleaning which the plan for that was to uh, decrease the amount of living organisms inside of the, the sea chest and uh, help them detach from the metal inside of the sea chest. And then we had a cathodic protection system that we included inside of our uh, sea chest to prevent buildup of corrosion. Our final design was a, uh, a uh, reach for us. We didn't really know if it was gonna work or not. Uh, it was a centrifugal type of filtration we had a Archimedes screw design in the middle of our basket that span, uh, spun at a high speed to filter out all the particulates going through the sea chest. Uh, we actually had problems with this sea chest design where the motors we ordered were not powerful enough to get through the resistance of the water to spin fast enough. So this design unfortunately did not work very well, uh, but we believe that if we did reorder a new motor for it, more powerful, that it could potentially work. Uh, this is our construction process that we went through. Uh, first we built the testing bench, which is made out of two by fours and uh, half inch plywood. Uh, and then we started creating our base model sea chest and um, in our five gallon metal bucket. And then we followed that with building our two improved designs, which are uh, our improved designs with motors and power washing fittings included on. Uh, all right, so here we have our bill of materials um, as curated for us by Steve based on what we spent. So after we turned in all the receipts, he sent us a bill of materials that literally encompassed all the different things that we had to order and the reorders that we had to do based on new problems. So we came to $540.72. You notice a lot of Amazon parts. Yeah, Home Depot did not have any plumbing stuff whatsoever and still is missing some incredibly you know, important plumbing pieces such as reducers. Um, we ended up going all the way up to Lowe's in Texas City and they are still uh, are missing quite a few pieces. So this ended up being a lot of parts purchased on Amazon and getting them shipped in to be able to have them in time and as close. This did come up with some problems, which we'll talk about later, but for the most part, we managed to get most of our parts um, just from Amazon and a couple other places online. So this is just a pretty much a little timeline of our build process. Start up here in this top left corner. That's uh, you know just raw materials. That right there is the test bench that we talked about and the five gallon buckets which hold the uh, seat strainer inside them. There we're, uh, that's when we started really laying out the piping system, figuring out 
where we're going to place the bucket as far as the uh, length that we're going to need in order to have all our all our sensors and fittings in uh, in line with each other. And again, right there, we're just laying it out and uh, figuring it out. Those are the uh, quick disconnects that I mentioned earlier, where you uh, it's a gator clamp and just two levers go forward and then clamp it down. It creates a watertight seal that way we can. Uh, so we can take these buckets in and out for each different design quickly. Right there is a final uh, design completely put together. So our pump, we ended up putting it separately because that worked better for us being able to uh, move it around independently. Made the whole thing a little bit uh, lighter and more maneuverable. So you didn't have to, for instance, you didn't have to put it on a crane or anything to move it. It's all movable by hand. Right there is our electronic system. Those are the Arduinos that power the two sensors. We have two sensors right here, and then there are two sensors right there on the other side of the bucket so we can get readings before and after the strainer to compare them. Then this right here is our unit tests, which are just basically testing individual components by themselves. So as you can see, we tested the pump, the DC motors that ran the spinning portion, so the spinning basket and the arc meter screw as well as the piping system and the sensors and the goal here was basically just make sure everything works by itself so we're not going to have any problems for a specific component not working when we put it all together the next stage of testing was the integration testing so that's when we start to put stuff together to make sure it works with each other so the big thing for this stage of testing was the data collection system we put it all wired it up together and made sure all the coding worked and then we we're actually reading, uh, getting readings. And that was a big thing because if, you know, if we didn't get any readings, we wouldn't be able to tell if we we're actually improving anything or not. So we had to make sure we did that, and as well as with the plumbing system, because we're running water through this, we have to make sure there's no uh, water leaks, no air leaks anywhere. And as Anthony will talk about on the next slide, we did have a few issues with our plumbing system. We had to do a little, few little redesigns to make sure it was completely watertight so we didn't have any leaks. Yeah. As Frank had attested, we, he was yeah. there when we were doing it. So with our regression test, which is a retest of a, design, of a portion of the project that we uh, needed to redesign because of flaws in our, our, our previous tests, uh, we redid the plumbing system. Uh, we originally had our sensors in a uh, clear uh, collector Tupperware container that latches closed, and we thought that worked. We tried siliconing it, we tried uh, JV Weld, we tried lots of glues and uh, seals to seal that up, but it, it was just not strong enough to get airtight. So we ended up replacing the uh, section of the piping system that uh, where the sensors were located to a bigger diameter PVC pipe, which sealed up very nicely compared to the Tupperware containers. And the only thing we lost from that was a sight glass option on our project. Uh, so we weren't able to see the water actually flowing through our piping system anymore. But we were still able to collect our, our sensor data from it. And I will say on that, as far as the sight glass issue, we weren't, we're not able to see it going through the system, but our pump has a uh, clear lid on the filter. So we can see that the water's flowing through it. We just can't see it in the middle of the system like we used to be able to. All right, yes. So one of the problems that uh, that we had was lots and lots of leaks. So as many of our teams did this year, uh, the problem with not having very exact equipment to cut things with or to machine things means that those small discrepancies mean that you have to come up with something to uh, plug leaks with. Uh, so we did a lot of leak plugging, spent a lot of time fixing and doing redesigns. And then after that, um, we were able to take our um, design out over to Shell Beach and just plug it into a generator and let it um, suck in water and begin filtration. So did a lot, a lot of testing. Um, hundreds and hundreds of pages of data was collected. So which later on you'll see the graphs of um, that just kind of tells you the overall gist of what happened during all that. So, right here. All right, uh, as you can see here, we did our temperature over time. You'll notice that they are almost two perfectly straight lines. That's because the temperature that went in was almost the exact same as what it went out. 
with just a little bit of discrepancy here, which if you were to look at it is 0.3 of a degree Fahrenheit. And sorry, Frank, these are all on Fahrenheit. All <laughs> on our units. I think I know. Kind so, of. Oh, we, we got liters per minute uh, right here for you, though. Well, so, there you go. Yeah. You're trying to get to the metric system. That's right. That's score your half point for that. So, we, after we did the temperature over time, when we were saying that it's not changing at all, we left it because uh, there was no point in doing extensive testing on temperature because it was just not changing. Um, over here, you have our three different designs uh, with the pressure differential and the flow rate over time. Uh, as was discussed earlier, you can see that our centrifugal, there's no pressure drop because it wasn't getting dirty. Um, as the filters got dirtier, you'll notice that the pressure differential increased on all of these unless it's the centrifugal, in which case it did no such thing because there was no filter getting dirty to obstruct water flow, so it just continued flowing through. Um, the other interesting thing you'll see is as they started to get dirty, the flow rates dropped over time. You can see right here, and right here, this is our uh, cleaning cycle right here. You can see the spike back up to a almost normal. Um, it is slightly lower, it's hard to see on the graph, but it is a little bit lower. Um, that is an important distinction because after you have an automated cleaning system, eventually you will have to empty out the bucket. And no cleaning system's 100% perfect. So, and especially if you have some longer term growth, we didn't run tests for months to see what kind of abuse the system could take. But as you have some more permanent stuff growing on it, it you will have to pull it out and manually scrub it out. So, but this is our data for the project. So our risks involved with uh, performing this project were, uh, we were worried about our cost of materials being higher than the $500 budget. Uh, and now we know that we only went, as Anthony mentioned earlier, we only went $40 over budget. Uh, so we did have to request uh, you know, extend, uh, extension on our budget, uh, but it, luckily it didn't go too far over. Uh, we were also really worried about having enough time for finishing the project. Uh, the, after the winter storm, we were in a rush to get all of our parts in because it delayed a lot of the delivery dates on our project, and our materials for the project. Uh, so we were really worried about that and, uh, and then it ended up working out to where we could get all of our parts in. Uh, we were also very worried about our failure of the pumping and our sensor, our Arduino sensors and our Arduino board. Um, the way we got around that is by using the pump as directed exactly by the uh, supplier and then using the sensors and the Arduino board exactly as the suppliers uh, demanded us to. And then finally we were worried about the breakage of parts uh, which would be a really high high uh, severity of a risk because we wouldn't be able to test our functions of our buckets after parts broke uh, and we again we followed proper procedures while performing all of our tests. Uh, our actions we took to resolve all of our project risks are following all of our procedures exactly as we intended. Um, our budget issues were mitigated by ordering all the parts as early as we possibly could and, uh, get, and our time constraints were also handled by doing that to make sure we could get everything coded, everything uh, properly put together by the time we needed to do testing. Uh, sadly, we were not able to get our steam system hooked up because of the time constraints, uh, but uh, that's the only section of the project that was not fully completed due to that. So this is, uh, I'll go ahead and play this little video for you all. It's just a little, uh, about Especially after we redid the piping design to include the PVC pipe versus the, uh, the Tupperware. We didn't have any leaks, uh, any major leaks. Had a little bit of leak around the discharge of the pump, but that's on the discharge side after the filtration. It's not involving, it's not going to take away from the suction aspect of the pump, so it's not a huge concern. 
but overall it functions as expected and we're happy with the results. All right, so project outstanding issues. Uh, it would be these two items right here. Uh, if you look on Amazon for this part right here, you'll see waterproof bearing. Uh -huh. Should say, maybe. <laughs> yes, maybe waterproof if I splash water on it. Not if I submerge it too feet deep in a five gallon bucket. So um, if, you, uh, if we were to hook it up, you notice there's a lot of leaking out of the bottom of the bucket. So and this is just comes from, all right, we're looking, we just trust what they're advertising. No, they just, they're just falsely advertising what it is. So this is something to where for a future project to really look further into um, bearing design, yes. Yes, the bearing design, Jeez. getting it to actually be something that works. The reason we even used them was so that when the motor is put through the bucket for either our centrifugal or our Archimedes screw, that it had little to no friction against the side of the bucket, and so we didn't have any issues with that. The other problem we had was kind of twofold on this. This right here was a little bit too short to be able to easily weld to. We may do, but it, it would have been nice to have something that was another half inch longer. And also, the torque on this motor was not particularly, particularly great. So, as a future project, getting something that was larger so that we could have a larger testing platform of being able to, all right, this isn't working, but we have some space to be able to kick it up a bit, that would have been real nice too. Are you trying to go back one time? So I was saying, who in the project? Can you just explain to me what it says there? Are you electromechanical? Can you explain what it says there? What you mean in, in yes, this right, right here? Oh, oh, yes. I'm sure it says the same thing. Exactly. I'm yeah. Just testing. <laughs> All right, so major roles and contributions. Um, I did the solid work and CFD work, the coding for the Arduino, and then the data collection system. So plugging everything up, getting all the sensors to work as they're supposed to be, and getting to where they can collect data. And I was in charge of the CHS subsystem construction, uh, data collection design with all the sensors, and organization of all the work. Uh, I was in charge of turning the paperwork in, getting the paperwork organized, and make sure it was done on time. Um, I was the assigned project planner uh, both semesters. Um, I was also pretty involved with the original design phase. And then lastly, I took the lead on the final report for this uh, project. I was in charge of designing the piping system and make sure all the tolerance, making sure all the tolerances were correct and uh, the sizing work. I also was heavily involved in getting all the PVC parts because as Anthony mentioned, we had to go to a few different places as well as online to get the ones. And I was also involved in the construction, overall construction of the test bench and heavily involved in construction of the PVC system. All right, so a phase two. If you were to create a phase two for our project, um, basically the idea is we've created from our systems, we created a like jury riggable way to test, but it's not an automated process. It's very much not. You'd have to do some work to actually be able to press a button and it actually run the cycle and clean it out. And that's really the, the phase two, to take the concepts that were generated from this and plug it up to a machine that all right, it detects the pressure differential. It stops the bucket, empties the bucket, and then activates the um, turning mechanism and the spraying mechanism to clean off the basket, and then refills it up and starts it over. So that would be the phase two of this. And our recommendation is to really check with things like bearings from the manufacturer, not the advertiser, as to what they are really rated for. All right, thank you. This is a sea strainer system, so the idea here is that you have your water inlet over there which is being simulated by, it's simulating the open ocean by being that bucket. It's super windy out today, so with a lot of waves, so we're just trying to have something more stable. Then it pumps water through, you see the sensor sticking out of the top right there on the pipes, which measure pressure, temperature, and flow rate. Then it comes here to this five gallon pail, 
which has the actual strainer in it, which is essentially just, you can think of like a pool filter as for filtering out all the stuff that goes through the water. Then it flows through the other pipe, through the pump, and then gets fit overboard, which this is essentially just how the system works. Uh, we're powering it here with a little generator uh, because the pump takes a little bit of, quite a bit of energy. We don't have an easy access power source here. But the basic idea is just to assist in filtering out a lot of the stuff that's in the water while still allowing a lot of water to flow. This is your 10 minute tour of, sure. you know, stuff filling up on your bucket. Oh, and there's uh, out here. We have uh, our uh, uh, party uh, protection, uh, which okay. if you were to look into the bucket, uh -huh. doesn't work, but it's in there anyway. Sure, sure. So, uh, but this is the basic premise.